So is Putin capable of wanting some sort of truce? Or is, or is he intent on bringing Ukraine back into Russia? Let's bring in Melinda Herring, deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Uh, she also lived in Ukraine, where she taught English for several years. It's very hard, Melinda, to get in the head of Vladimir Putin. But everything I know, including uh, that long, rambly article that he wrote not so long ago about uh, Russia's imperatives toward Ukraine, would tell me that he's not ready to stop. Hey, Tyler, you got it exactly right. Vladimir Putin has been the same man he was when he was angry at the Munich Security Conference back in 2007, and he said that he regretted the end of the Soviet Union. He's been very clear that Ukraine is not a real country, it's not a real language, and that my Russia's historic lands sit in Ukraine. So Vladimir Putin is in no room, he's in no mood to negotiate, and this talk about uh, progress in negotiations it is completely false. It, it's nonsense. There, the, the, the Ukrainians came out and they said there is no room to negotiate. What explains, uh, Melinda, his, his ability to do things that are truly inhumane, that by any standard are atrocities? Is it just that he does not care, that he is a thug born and bred of the, of the KGB theory, and that he will apply whatever force is needed to bring his goals together? Tyler, I I'm not a psychologist or, or a psychiatrist, but when I look at what Vladimir Putin's doing, I, I was one of the, the analysts who thought that he would go in. And the reasons are, are pretty easy to understand. Putin is an old man, and he's thinking about his legacy. And he wants to go down in Russian history as a great Russian president. And you, take, you do that by taking a big swath of land. So I think that's part of it. He also saw opportunity everywhere. He saw weakness everywhere, in Europe, in the United States, in Ukraine. And there's never been a better moment for him to go in. But does he, does he care about the needs of others? Clearly not. Look what he did in Chechnya in the 2000s. Correct. He, he bombed the place you know, to oblivion. And he's going to do the same thing in Ukraine. Melinda, what do you make of all the chatter lately about chemical weapons and the fact that the U.S. is not even talking about what a response to that would look like? I think that's exactly right, Kelly. So I was really worried when Vladimir Putin threatened to lob nukes at Europe. But then I, I did some more digging and I talked to some more uh, experts, and they say that he's not doing the things he would need to do. He hasn't done anything other than threaten. So I think that we should all ignore him. And we should focus on the war and making sure that Ukraine can get the weapons it needs and that the refugees can leave. That's what we need to be focused on now. Ignore Vladimir Putin's empty threats. I asked a former high-ranking U.S. intelligence official a couple of days ago if there was any way that Putin would be taken out from the inside. In other words, was there a possibility that his generals or his intelligence uh, apparatus might turn on him, seeing what damage is being done to Russia on the world stage? Uh, he said, no, very, very small possibility of that. Do you know anything, any insight on that? Tyler, that's right. The, the circle around Vladimir Putin is very small, and they, they're all, I think, at least 58, so it's an older crowd. Uh, and they were all members of the security apparatus. So it's it would be very, very hard to get into that circle with a weapon. Uh, and, you know, it's a one in, one in a hundred or a one in a thousand chance that we cannot um, place our security and our hopes on that. You have to place your hopes on the Russian people and you have to talk to the Russian people directly uh, and assume that we can change their hearts but and minds. But how do we do Maybe. that? How do we do that if he has basically controlled information flow and is going to tonight shut down, probably already has shut down, uh, Instagram because he, he, they have allowed uh, anti-Russian uh, messaging to be uh, fomented on their site? How do, we, how do we get to the Russian people? I'm so glad you asked that question. We need to build a Russian language cable television station with people who know how to build first rate TV like this station. And it needs to be in Russia, in the Russian language, and we need to be competing for the hearts and minds of Russians. We haven't done enough. And uh, you know, a, a few million dollars in a three, for a three year project is not gonna do it. I'm talking big money. There's tele television producers in Washington who know how to do this. Congress needs to go to back to the drawing board and put some real money behind this idea.